PNR Networks is a member of Patreon. Show your love for our shows by joining our ongoing fundraising campaign and get some fantastic perks in return. Check it out and become a Patreon sponsor. You can sign up at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, backslash PNR Networks. And thanks for your support. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No E's. That's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. It's Kim versus TC in the battle of the lists. My list is better. My list is better. My list is better. No, it's not. My list is better. Kim or TC, who has the better list? From Subject Cinema, this is Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and TC Kirkham. guys, welcome to another week here on Front Row 5 and 10, brought to you by the folks that bring you Subject Cinema. That would be me and him, the me part being Kim Brown. And the him part being T.C. Kirkham. Welcome. Hi. We're, we're back. We've been gone a couple weeks. We've been having uh, all kinds of time issues because of all the stuff going on with the other sites mm-hmm. and getting ready for Boston Springs the Festival and stuff. And it wasn't just this show. Catastrophe Vortex went by the wayside for a couple of weeks, too, because um, we just couldn't have time. But we haven't forgotten you. Kim would be rather amiss if we'd forgotten. I she's would. been very much looking forward to this, although mm-hmm. she said she's having a great deal of difficulty coming up with the list. I did. Um, I, I did, too. Yeah, I did. I decided to come up with the list this week. We're doing two fives as opposed to one ten. We're doing our top five James Bond ladies, because I don't like calling them Bond I call girls. them Bond women on my Bond list. women, that's good. Uh, Bond ladies and Bond bad guys and hench people. Right. So, we're starting with the ladies first. And I think that um, overall, uh, we'll, we'll try to get some more lists going, but we'd love to hear from you and ideas about your lists, what list you'd like to hear us do. If you give us a suggestion... We'll get your name on the show, we'll put your name on the show notes, and you'll get a prize of some sort. So be sure to send in those ideas at frontrow at pnrnetworks.com. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the criteria you had? Did you have anything particular that you were looking for? Because well, me, I, I haven't seen all the James Bond films, mm-hmm. so I had to go with what I knew, and I just had to pick from them, and that wasn't very many. So Right. I'm going by the films. We're going strictly on the films here, not the novels. Or the TV specials. Or the TV specials. Um, and I was going by, um, the... Should we explain that? Huh? Should we explain that? The, not many people realize that there were two, one or two James Bond specials on television back in the 50s in the days of, in the days of TV, early days well, of TV. Well, there was at least one that I can they think They did Casino of. They, Royale, they did Casino with, Royale. With, with Jimmy Bond. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Bond, who was an American agent played by actor Barry Morse. What the hell? And Le Chief was played by Peter Lorre. Yes, I'm interesting. sorry. No. Um, what? No for Le Chief? I think that's interesting casting. No, I think that's interesting casting, but it's an American, Orson and an played American first. James Bond is... Stupid. Stupid. That's sacrilegious. Then again, so is a British Superman or a British Spider-Man or... Anyway, uh, I ran enough about that on subject cinema. Anyway, go ahead. My oh, cri- I'm sorry. Am I supposed to do... Oh, you're doing criteria. Okay. Yes. My criteria was the effect that they have on the story, how they move the story along, not just being beautiful. I mean, being beautiful doesn't hurt, but I definitely felt like I was talking about women that I felt like made an impact on the story and weren't just there as eye candy or cannon fodder. Um, so that's that was my criteria. Okay. I just went by what I went by. You know, just my that's gut fine. feeling. Um, your list, does that mean I start? I think you should start, yeah. All right, with the Bond women, let's kick off there. 
with number five, I have an alternate here because I, I have to I have to bring it up because she's such a favorite actress, but I've never seen the film all the way through, and I didn't feel right giving her a, a position. Mm-hmm. So my alternate number five is Famke Jensen as Xenia on a top from GoldenEye. Mm-hmm. I love Famke Jensen. Um, even when she's in all that makeup and Hansel and Gretel, she's still fun. Um, my number five, my actual number five, I don't remember very well, but I always know that I like the lady that played her, and I always thought she was beautiful, and I know that she was a very smart character and uh, uh, somewhat equal to James Bond in, in the level of of uh, talent she had as a skilled agent. Her name was Solitaire. She was played by Jane Seymour mm-hmm. in Live and Let Die. I remember very little about the, the character, actual character. I've seen the movie a couple of times. The last time was like 30 years ago. And um, I do remember Jane. Jane is a very beautiful lady. Yes. I love Jane Seymour. She's very beautiful, although you couldn't have got me to watch Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, if you paid me to, because I can't stand shows like that. But this is this was much better. And back when she was still young, still fairly recent and new in her career, from switching over from modeling to acting and doing a good job of it. I thought she was very good. What I, what I remember of it was a right. lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I have to be honest, I don't remember it very well, but I do remember the beauty right. <laughs> of, of Jane Seymour. So number five on my list is Solitaire from okay. my, Live and Let Die. Uh, my number five is Tiffany Case, who was played by Jill St. John in uh, Diamonds Are Forever, which was the Bond film that came out in 1971, uh, starring Sean Connery as James Bond. Uh, she is actually working for the bad guys when we first meet her in the film. She is a smuggler that doesn't realize she's working for one of the worst criminal organizations in the world in the fact that she works for Spectre, but doesn't know it. Um, she, Bond is posing as a gangster named Peter Franks, and he partners up with her as Franks, um, trying to find out what her role is in the latest scheme that's been put together by <coughs> by the head of uh, Spectre, Ernst Stavro, Blof- uh, Stavro Blofeld. Um, she winds up getting, she winds up finding out that this guy really isn't Peter Franks when the real Peter Franks shows up at her door. <laughs> Oops. Um, but she does wind up coming around to James Bond's side of things because a the people that the people that work for Blofeld that he feels like aren't useful anymore have this unfortunate habit of turning up dead, and when another woman dies in her place, she figures out yeah I'm on the wrong side I need to switch sides quickly, and she winds up helping James with his mission. And helping herself to James's charms, as as often happens in these films. So my number five, Tiffany Case, played by Jill St. John in mm. Diamonds Are Forever. My number five has actually appeared in more than one Bond film. And she's probably, huh? You're number four. Oh, I'm sorry, number four. Mm. Duh. My number four appear, has appeared in more than one Bond film. And uh, she's appeared in two so far and may appear in three of the current series. And she's actually been in a lot more mm-hmm. over the years. But I'm talking about the modern version. <coughs> My number four is Eve Moneypenny, played by Naomi Harris in Skyfall and Spectre. Uh, Eve Moneypenny is a very smart young lady. When we first see Eve in this new incarnation, because in the James Bonds of the past, she's been M's secretary mm-hmm. and and uh, uh, Girl Friday, as it were. <coughs> played by Lois Maxwell. And, and a few other people. Uh, Lois did it first and longest. Um, Eve is a field agent when we first see her in Skyfall, and she is uh, helping out with the latest uh, mission, and of course, she's the one that shoots Bond off the train. Oopsie! Um, leading to that that thing by Adele. Skyfall! Which, which, um, um, I'm sorry, I hate that song. <laughs> the, 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 uh, it's not as bad as other stuff, like the Quantum of Solace music, but still... Um, and then she resurfaces Inspector, and at this point in time, uh, she's now no longer a field agent. Now she's where she should be as a assistant to M, uh, and for starting off with uh, helping adjust uh, Gareth Mallory. Ma- Mallory? Is it Mallory yeah. or Malloy? Mallory. Mallory's adjusting to his new position, having M, having the original M, having passed away in the last film. Um, so it's like, okay. And she's also there helping out a few places where he, 
in the field where she probably shouldn't be at that point. Um, I have been a Naomi Harris fan since I first laid eyes on the woman on the Tomorrow People revival back in 1993, 92 or 93. Mm -hmm. And and I've followed her career since then. She just blew minds in Moonlight, got Spirit nominated, and and she's up for a Clotridis Award. And she's fantastic in everything I've seen her in. I, I wasn't terribly fond with the movie... She was in the Pirates of the Caribbean films, but her character is intensely interesting. Um, that wasn't, did I let's face it, there hasn't really been a good Pirates movie since two. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Um, but here, she's awesome. She has great chemistry with Daniel Craig. She has good chemistry with, uh, what, what, what we see of it so far with, uh, Ray Fiennes and with, um, Ben Whitshaw. I couldn't think of his name as, 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 uh, Q. And, I love what they do, and she's going to be an excellent asset as it continues on to the next film, my number four, the current Eve Moneypenny, played by uh, Naomi Harris in Skyfall and Spectre. Okay. Uh, the next Bond lady on my list is one that only appeared in one film, um, but she's defi- she definitely Most of made them only imp- appear in one film. Yeah. Some of them don't, but She most definitely of them. made an impression, especially on anybody that saw the poster, uh, which was designed by Bill Gold for uh, for the twelfth uh, James Bond film, For Your Eyes Only, which came out in 1981. Um, you like Lynn Holly Johnson? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And ew. Um, <laughs> no, L- Lynn Holly Johnson is not the person I'm talking about who played a character <laughs> named BB Doll. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. Yeah. Um, no, I'm talking about my number four is an actress named Carol Bouquet, Bu- uh, Buqu- I guess, is or Bouquet, I don't know how you pronounce this, um, <coughs> who played a character named Melina Havelock. Um, Melina is the woman that was going after the people that she was, that murdered her parents. Um, she is the daughter of marine archaeologists who are murdered trying to track down a stolen weapon. And she is very skilled with a crossbow and very much of the opinion that she is going to get revenge no matter what happens or who stands in her way, even if who stands in her way is a suave British secret agent. James Bond in this film being played by Roger Moore. Um, Their relationship is kind of contentious at first, but she winds up succumbing to Bond's charms, as most women tend to. Um, and Well, if they didn't, you wouldn't have a story. No, that's true. And they face some pretty harrowing times in the film before we get to the end and the bad guys are defeated and she and Bond have a romantic interlude. She was a beautiful woman, and any woman that can handle a crossbow like that is someone who's going to be interesting to me. I'm going to find interesting anyway. So my number four, Melina Havelock from For Your Eyes Only. An interlude. Is that a nice way to say they screwed like bunnies? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Yes, it is. My number three, a lot of people are going to be angry with me about, I'm sorry, because I know people don't really care for this film, but it's the person, and I can't help it. I love this person, and I just think she's awesome in everything. And so that means when she's in Bond, she's awesome, even if the movie isn't that good, according to most people. My number three is Countess Teresa DeFanzento, otherwise known as the real Mrs. James Bond, played by Diana Rigg in On, Our Majesty, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. The only Bond film to star George Lazenby. Um, I realize that this is not one of the favorite films of everybody out there. I didn't think Lazenby did that bad of a job, in all honesty. I have seen it twice, and I enjoyed it. I love Diana Rigg. The woman can do no wrong, as far as I'm concerned. Everything I've ever seen her in, she's awesome. I grew up. I was in love with her when I was three years old, when she was running around in that leather outfit on The Avengers. As Emma Peel. I have loved her ever since then. I just adore her. Teresa here is is very much Bond's uh, intellect equal. Mm-hmm. In fact, she might be a bit superior to the way Lazenby plays the character. But um, I, I, I... I'm not touching that one. No. I, I um, Well, he's supposed to be dim-witted, the character, the, the, the undercover thing that he does. Yeah. <clears throat> I think people rag on him way too much. Um, th- there's... I mean, granted, he's not Sean Connery or or Roger Moore, 
but he's still not a bad looking dude and he can he wasn't that bad of an actor. It would have been nice if James Bond didn't sound Australian, even though he did attempt to, to change the accent a bit. Um but in any case I loved her look. Her clothing was to die for. Every outfit this woman had was either over the top beautiful or over the top under uh, um, uh, a bikini. You know, nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even on on my the first time I saw this, I was twelve or thirteen. Yeah. So I, even on that psyche of me, it was very nice. <sighs> Diana Rigg is very nice on the eyes. Um, my number three, Teresa Di Vincento. Who would later become Mrs. James Bond and be an ill fate right afterward? Yep. Played by Diana Reagan on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Okay. <coughs> um, next up on my list is uh, a, a character that she made a big impression on a lot of people because a lot of people consider her the first Bond lady, you know, which is understandable because she was in the first James Bond film. Um, number three on my list is Honey Ryder, uh, who was played by Ursula Andress, uh, who, whose, uh, voice was actually dubbed by Nikki Vanderzil and whose singing voice was dubbed by Diana Copeland. Uh, Honey is a, be- a beachcomber that, uh, sells, uh, the, the beach stuff. Yeah. Be- beach, you know, <laughs> s- seashells and things like that. See, you know, she, to- she's, sh- I'll never do it right she sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah, wearing damn near next to nothing. <laughs> Did that include sand dollars? She's got a couple of nice ones, too. <laughs> um, we see her coming up out of the water the first time we see her, which is about halfway through the film. That iconic image of her rising up out of the water. Which they the- recreated with Daniel Craig and Casino Royale. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just went off someplace else for a She likes Daniel Craig and his Speedo. Anyway. Oh, me likey. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to Honey. Um, that, the imagery of her rising up out of the water with the bikini and the knife strapped onto her, onto her leg is, I mean, that's an iconic James Bond image. Uh, she is very sexy and very capable. Actually, she's probably even more capable than she is sexy, and that's saying a lot, since she's very sexy. Uh, she and Bond wind up bonding, I, I suppose. I knew you were going to go there. I could have well, I could have referred to it as an act of bondage, but I hey. I knew you were going to go there, too. It's a family show. Uh, Ursula Andress is one of the most beautiful women in the world. Yes. I mean, let's just face it, mm-hmm. you know. And I think the fact that Honey makes it very clear that if you F with her, she will kick your ass, and she's very capable of doing it. I like that about her. She's I, I've always thought she was a great combination of sensuality and you know sensuality and self reliance, which is a really great combination. So my number three, Honey Rider. My number two is the most recent of the Bond women that are officially considered Bond women on okay. this list, although. You'll see when I get to number one why it's not necessarily the case. My number two Bond woman of all time was the best when it came to going toe to toe with Bond as a ally. All right. I thought even more so than some of the other ones, she could give Solitaire a run for her money. Mm-hmm. My number two is Vesper Lynn, played by Eva Green in Casino Royale. My number two is Vesper Lynn <coughs> as well. And and. Uh, She's just dynamite. Um, Eva Green made her debut in my on my radar with that. Ended up on Kim's PNR Rising Stars list that year, and ever since then, she's just always drawn me into everything she's done. As Vesper, she's beautiful, she's brainy, she's got style, but she's also feminine. She deals with the attack on her in in a way that you would normally find somebody being yeah. upset. <coughs> And um, it's it's an, and she and of course she's got James Bond to help her comfort yeah. her there. So um, my whole thing with Vesper is the fact that she's number two on my <coughs> list because she's she's such a tragic character. I mean, when we find out in Casino Royale, spoiler alert, that she is working for the bad guys as dun, well. Dun, dun. It's not out of out of the fact that she believes in their cause or anything. They they're holding her her loved one 
captive and she's working for them only because they're threatening to kill him if she doesn't do what they want. But she winds up still trying to help Bond out and she winds up paying for all of that with her life when she winds up committing suicide at the end of the film. Well, um, I don't know if she actually commits suicide. It's like kind of you don't have she doesn't she doesn't get any way to get out. Honey, I don't know. I don't agree with that at all. She moves as far to the back of that elevator as she can when Bond's desperately reaching for oh, her. Okay, all right. And fine. she opens her mouth and lets and okay, and, okay, you know, okay, all right, fine. She, I, I would. I mean, that's suicide, and it's one of the most painful ways to do it. Drowning is not fun. Um, and Eva Green is so compelling in that role she's like you mentioned she's beautiful she's brainy but she is also a human being i mean when they have that enormous fight in the hotel and she's sitting in the shower in shock you know fully clothed after what happens and bond very gently like holds on to her hand and holds her fingers it's a very beautiful scene in the hands of somebody else i don't think it would have come off as well but i think that um like eva did such an amazing job and vesper is such a tragic character i i really like what she did with that part so my number two vesper lind my number two too which brings us to number one it's time for number one this is it. Here it comes. Number one. Sorry, Dr. Anybody Mendes. remember... Oh, I was going to say, anybody remembers where that's from, give us a right. <laughs> um, it's hard to include because some people insist that it shouldn't be included, but I think it should because she's the primary uh, Bond woman in one film. Even though there's other ones around, it doesn't make any sense to say, well, just because who she is doesn't make her qualified for a Bond woman. Excuse me, she's in the Bond movie. She's a woman. That makes her a Bond woman. Right. My number one is M, played by Judy Dench in Skyfall. Okay, well, that um, makes sense. I loved I love Judy Dench in anything, practically anyway. The woman is just amazing as an actress, as a performer, as a person, from what I can tell. And and um she is Tough as nails as, yeah. as M. She's been playing M since the end of the Pierce Brosnan era. And I really love her portrayal of this character. When you say what you mean is that M is in the forefront in Skyfall. So that's why you would M consider- is the Bond woman in Skyfall. Right. I mean, really, because you don't really see um, Eve that much. There's no other major female character in that film, really. So major no, I would yeah, I would agree with that. And and I I she's clearly the object of Bond's affection, only in this case it's more of a motherly or sisterly car- affection than it would be wanting to jump her bones like right. he usually does. Right. Um this this woman who has been through all these things in the however many years she's been with the British Secret Intelligence Service um, is at her wit's end and is being tormented by this guy who is out to make sure she comes down hard mm-hmm. in the government and, and eventually wants to take her life. Yeah. So Bond makes sure she doesn't uh, go without a major fight. Right. And the two of them, the chemistry between Jan- Daniel Craig and Judy Dench has been good in every film. But it really is off the top with Skyfall, and it is really amazing. It, make, it is what makes Skyfall my all-time favorite James Bond film, mm-hmm. and what makes Judy Dench, as M, my number one Bond woman. Okay, that's great. No, I understand what you're saying, especially with Skyfall, because Eve is more of a secondary female character in, in the film, and mm. the only other female character that we really see very much of is uh, Severin. The woman that winds up working for the bad guy, uh-huh. and um, she's winds up in the yeah. Movie. She's not. Well, she's. I had forgotten about her, but she's really not. I wouldn't. No, have I understand. Her on my radar anyway. No, that's a good choice. Um, my number one is somebody that you've already mentioned. My number one is Eve Moneypenny, um, played by the absolutely unbelievably wonderful uh, Naomi Harris, 
whom, as we, you mentioned, we both have... She's been on our radar since she appeared in the revival of the Tomorrow People from the 90s. 20 years you know, ago. And I... Shut up. 25 years ago. Bite me! And I remember <laughs> seeing that... I remember seeing her and I remember thinking, this girl is somebody to watch. And she has done nothing but continue yeah. to be a terrific actress. And I love the fact that... I mean, Miss Money Penny has always been a part of the James Bond universe... And she's always been up till this, you know, point, you know, behind the desk and and pining slash flirting with Bond. It's kind of, it's kind of, uh, you know, to use a Star Trek reference, kind of a Christine Chapel Spock kind of a thing. Although it's much more playful than <coughs> than Chapel and Spock's kind of thing, where that's more of a one sided crush yeah. on her part. Yes. Um, here I think they both know it's not going to go anywhere. It's just fun flirting. Yeah, yeah. But this Eve Money Penny is completely different in the fact that she's out there in the field, and the whole, you know, the whole thing where she winds up making a really painful decision about whether to try and kill this guy who's stolen some government information. You know, she's got to try and take this shot, and she might wind up hitting Bond, and she winds up taking the shot. And she ends up hitting Bond. And she ends up hitting Bond. Um, Oopsie. Which, which, who doesn't hold it against her, which I was like, awesome. We see her again in, in Spectre, and uh, she's, you know, just this amazing character. And I don't know if Spectre is going to be the last James Bond film for a while. I no, don't know. No, it won't. It, I, 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 I'm, thinking, I'm thinking there'll be one by the end of 2018 with Daniel Craig. I don't know. All I know is whenever James Bond does come back, as it always says at the end of the films, James, James Bond, Bond will, will return. return. I hope when he does return, I hope Eve Money Penny <laughs> is right by his side. So my number one, Eve Money Penny. Yay! So our top five Bond women, mine are Solitaire from Live and Let Die, Eve Money Penny from Skyfall and Spectre, uh, Teresa DeFanzenso, Contessa from uh, uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Uh, Vesper Lynn from Casino Royale and M from Skyfall with an alternative Xenia on the top from, from GoldenEye because I didn't see it, but I love Fonka Jensen. I had to mention it somewhere. Yeah. Fonka, if you're out there, call him. <laughs> um, my, my top She's five. not my type. As much as I love her, I'm well aware she's not my type. Um, you, mm, anyway. I appreciate it, though. Uh, my number five, uh, Tiffany Case from Diamonds Are Forever. Number four, Mal- Melina Havlock from um, For Your Eyes Only. Number three, Honey Ryder from uh, Dr. No. Number two, Vesper Lind from Casino Royale. And number one, Eve Money Penny from um, Skyfall and Spectre. I said that wrong. I'm not her type. Let me. That's what I meant to yeah. say. <laughs> she's not. She's I'm definitely say, she's my totally type. She's totally your type, but I didn't want to correct you. No, my, I'm not her type. Sorry. I know that for a fact. (gasps) Oh, well. Uh, All right. On to the Bond bad guys. Yeah. Now, you said we could include henchmen and lead guys. Yes. we. I I figured when we're talking baddies, you know, baddies is such a big, it's it's such an all-encompassing thing. You've got the big bad. You've got the subordinate people. You know, and... and You've got the oddball side people that show up once or twice but are memorable because of their showing up once or twice. Yeah. Because these it's really, it's, you know, it's really hard to forget a seven-foot-tall guy with steel teeth. Um, you know, that kind of a deal. Although, Richard Kyle, God rest his soul, did Keel. not make my list. Keel. God rest his soul, <laughs> did not make my list. Not neither. Um, I've never seen any of those all the way through, just parts of them. Mm, so I couldn't, me too, yeah. Couldn't take um, them. So, uh, do you want to start this, or should I? My number five is my favorite of all of the henchmen. Okie dokie. Um, and it's not because I'm particularly fond of his role in this film. I am, but... I remember this actor when I was a small boy, very small boy, we're talking under six, doing a series of commercials for Vicks 44 cough medicine. Do you remember these? You're too, you're too young to remember these, don't you? <laughs> no, I In don't. these commercials, he would start coughing and start hitting things and start chopping things and they would all start to break and he'd take Vicks Formula 44 and it would all stop. It's Odd Job from Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Same actor, and I've forgotten his name. Harold oh, Sakamoto? Sa- 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 Sataka. Sataka. Harold mm-hmm. Sataka. Um, played this basically Odd Job character in these commercials. And I remember those from when I was a kid and, and thinking they were hilariously funny. And I loved him in this. He had an 
I, I, my, am I correct in thinking he did not have a single word in that film? Uh, nope. That's what I thought. I don't think all of it was silent. Anything. Every bit of it, and and every time he's on screen, you're like, you know, something bad is going to happen in a really spectacular way. And he's really a good fighter as well, and it looked really fun. And of all the classic Bond films, Goldfinger is my favorite. I've only mm-hmm. seen two or three of the Sean Connerys, and I love that one. I think that one's fun. So my number five is Odd Job from Goldfinger. Okay. Uh, my number five is a, a character that I I just like the way he did this because you have to respect somebody who tells you to your face they're going to screw you over the first chance they get. Uh, my number five is Nick Knack. Uh, Nick Knack was the, um, the henchman of Francisco Scaramanga, aka the man with the golden gun. Um, and he wasn't looking for planes. No. Uh, <laughs> that would come with later. The golden gun, which <laughs> was the, the ninth Bo- James Bond film, which came out in 1974. Um, the thing about Nick Knack, who was played by the uh, late Hervé Villachez, was the fact that he was promised by Scaramanga that when Scaramanga died, all of his assets, his property and money and all that stuff like that, would his go criminal to, kingdom would go to Nick Knack. So it was actually pretty much in Nick Knack's best interest to help Bond kill off his boss, mm-hmm. and he's just. Very cheerful about it. And very pragmatic about it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you're evil, but you're actually kind of honest. And I <laughs> kind of have to respect that. Even though you're like this, you know, psychotic murdering person. Mm. I kind of have to respect your honesty there. So my number five, I know. I Why am, did you suddenly go into a Dr. Evil sounding I, voice I'm there? I'm sorry. It's just, it's just <laughs> Wrong franchise. My number five, <laughs> knickknack. He came very. I actually considered him. He did not make my list, but I did consider him. My number four is the most over the top of the uh, of the of the Bond villains. Um, and that's I, saying a lot. Well, yeah, but there are, there are some of them that are kind of crazy, and then there are some of them that are just completely delusional. And not counting Christoph Waltz from Spectre, but this is because that was just like, huh. Um, this one will always take the cake simply because of that one scene. And it's just so good. My number four, Arik Goldfinger from Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. Goldfinger! I knew that was coming, too. Uh, yes. Oh, who doesn't love that scene? Well, Do you I expect know. me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die! Yeah. you got to love that. That's an iconic scene. And he delivers it with great great poise, and I think he's dubbed. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I seem to remember when I was researching this a couple weeks ago that he was dubbed. And I'm like, why did they dub all these people in the early Bond films? Um... Well, Gert Frobe, I don't think... He may have, he may have spoken very I don't know how English. well his English was. He was, Ger- I, he was a German actor, wasn't he? I not? believe he not? so, and I don't... Yeah, I don't know how strong his grasp of English mm. was. I'm not terribly sure, but that doesn't mean anything. But this character is choice, so though. over the top. He's ultimate over the top... You know, hand hand ringing, <laughs> Doctor Evil. Yeah, type. yeah. And Mother- I love those kind of villains. You don't really find a lot of them in the Bond series. You find power hungry people, and you find some that are bordering on it, like the character Yafet Koto played in Live and Let Die, mm-hmm. and Scaramanga, who is kind of like that, although he's more of an assassin than a true power hungry person. I'm not sure about the later films that I missed, but these. Goldfinger, he's just your old fashioned give you the creeps bad guy. Yeah. And he's it's all like, in it for himself. Yeah, it's not like this take over the world. Yes, he or just like wants that. Fort Knox, that's all. Yeah. Or at Goldfinger number four. <laughs> okay. No, that's cool. That's a really good choice. And I like your I like your reasoning in the fact that he his motivation isn't like, you know, I want to take over the world or I want to blow up the world or something which I never understand people that want to blow up the world. I'm like, you do realize you're on it, right? You know, but anyway. Well it's like it's I'm, like Stephen Wright used to say, it's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. Moving on. Um <laughs> That is funny. My mother thinks that joke's hysterical. Anyway. Your mother thinks Huey Lewis is sexy. So, you know. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Broadcast that to the whole world. Thank you so much. 
Love you, Mom. <laughs> like you're actually listening or even know what a podcast is. Anyway. My number four is actually somebody that you just mentioned and I just mentioned <laughs> um, because he's Nick Knack's boss. Mm-hmm. My number four is Francisco Scaramanga, the man with the golden gun. From- my number three is Francisco Scaramanga, so go ahead. Uh, uh, the gentleman from the movie of the same name. Um, played by Christopher Lee. Yes, played by Christopher Lee, which is, come on, why he's on this list. It's because Christopher Lee. it's Christopher <laughs> Lee. Come on. God, we're so predictable, aren't we? Let's get real. It's Christopher F. and Lee. Of course he's going to be on this list somewhere. Um, an assassin who is of the opinion that he is the very best at what he does. And what he does isn't very nice. Sorry. I he had kills rip, people. I had to rip off a Wolverine reference. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he knows there's someone out there who may not be quite as good as him, but is close, and that bugs him, and that would be James Bond. Scaramanga is... is well, we've got Bond beat in one area. What? Bond doesn't have three nipples. True. <laughs> very true. Um... Scaramanga is another one of these characters that I, the thing I like about him is the fact that he is, he's very charming. He's very charming and actually very low key. He doesn't raise his voice. He's not one of these frothing at the mouth crazy villains. <laughs> but you look in this guy's eyes and you're like, this son of a bitch is not playing with a full deck. <laughs> You know, this guy is mad as a hatter, and you know it. And But at the same time, you're like, if he said, like, sit down and have a drink, you'd be like, okay. You know, I mean, he no might... No reason to think you're going to drop a Mickey in my drink or anything, or yeah, a roofie, I mean, he or might, whatever He might call totally poison you, but, you know, mm-hmm. he'll be polite about it. <laughs> and so, my number three, uh, four, I'm sorry, my number four... Francisco Scaramanga. My number three is Francisco Scaramanga for pretty much the reasons that you said. I, I love Christopher Lee. He's always the one of the five or six people who are just ultimately good at playing bad guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've seen him play sympathetic characters before, yeah. like at Airport 77 and a few other places, but he's really an amazing actor when he really has great material that he can chew the scenery with. Yeah. And here he does a beautiful job and it doesn't go over the top, which no. is hard to do. When you have dialogue like this movie has, yeah, especially on Roger Moore's part, that whole speak now or forever hold your peace, P-I-E-C-E, um, this is this is like the best of the, I, I would consider him of the era, of that era, the best and most learned of the, of the Bond villains. Yeah. He's very wise, very smart, too smart to be caught, obviously, until this point. Mm-hmm. And, and... Believes his own press releases, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, he's quite conceited in some ways. Um, he has an impeccable sense of dress, and he does have that third nipple, and I hope it doesn't itch depending on where he puts his shirt. My number three, Francisco Scaramanga from The Man with the Golden Gun. Okay. Uh, my number two... No, sorry, sorry. My number three. My number three uh, best Bond bad guy. Actually... When we started watching the movie, I was like, okay, so he's the head bad guy. And then we find out more than halfway through the movie, oh, wait, no, he's not the head bad guy. All right. But he's still a real creepy bastard. (laughs) Um, And I hate to say that because the man that plays this character is a really handsome dude. (laughs) And he's got one of the sexiest voices ever. Ever. Uh, my number three is Le Chief uh, from <laughs> Casino Royale, played by Mads Mikkelsen. We're not wow. worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. This movie lent us, uh, sent a, uh, this movie is where we discovered Mads Mikkelsen. Yes. And we have been rabid fans ever yes, since of we everything have. the guy does. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy is awesome. <laughs> Who is this dude? And then I went and I looked up, I'm like, Oh, okay, this guy's been around for a while. Well, I'm a moron. You know, but... We didn't know because he was mostly, was, did mostly Norwegian films. Le so. Chief is a banker to the bad guys. He is the person that takes the funds that bad people make by doing bad things and invests them so they can get more money. And he is also not above making sure that things will go the way that... He wants them to by causing, you know, disasters like trying to blow up a plane so a, so a company's stock will plunge and that kind of a deal. Um, he almost kills Bond twice, once during a poker game, uh, a high-stakes Texas Hold'em poker game, 
which they switched out from Baccarat because nobody knows how to play Baccarat. <laughs> and, um, and like a poor marksman, he keeps missing the target. Oh, wrong, wrong film series. Sorry. Okay. And later on, tortures Bond almost to death from the look of things by having Bond st- uh, put naked in a chair that has no bottom and beating his testicles with a knotted rope. Um, but that made Bond absolutely nuts, don't you think? <laughs> Hate mail goes to him. That wasn't me. He's not going to ball, is he? I'm not. <laughs> oh, my frog. Really? Really? We're going to do this now? Um, that scene is one of the most squirmingly uncomfortable scenes I have ever seen. And I was like... I have and a she's naked. She's sitting there going, "Oh yeah." No, I was not. I was. I was like, "There's a naked Daniel Craig on screen right now," and I'm sitting here going, "Please make it stop." There's something very wrong with this picture <laughs> because this scene. Was I remember just, distinctly crossing my legs and cringing. This, this scene was so disturbing, and I don't even have. I do those. that when it's on TV too. <laughs> I don't even have those parts, and I'm watching this going, "Oh God, oh God, make it stop!" and um, Lachie's portrayal in that scene is part of the reason for that. Mads Mikkelsen just knocks it out of the park. He is so damn slimy in this role. I'm sorry, Mr. Mickelson. I do think you're awesome. Please call me. Um, I just married children. I know. I know. Family man. Fine. Okay. Um, but he's so good at being bad. So my number three, Lachie. My number two is Lachie. <laughs> From, from Mads Mikkelsen from Casino Royale. I love this guy. Mads Mikkelsen, I, I have become such a huge fan of his. I didn't watch Hannibal because I'm not into that character. Mm-hmm. But I've seen a number of his other films. And, and most recently, his, his turn where he's practically unrecognizable and under the makeup in Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. The little bits of stuff. But he's really great. Well, I don't know. I think you can recognize him. You can see it. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, but it's not the... The, the distinct, handsome, you know, no. rugged guy. No, he looks pretty effed up. Yeah. I still haven't seen Men and Chicken, which is supposed to be one of his funniest roles, and I've never, I, you know, but I've, the chief is just like shudder inducing. He's creepy as all hell. And that whole blood tear thing is really, bleh. you're like, what the hell? Oh my God, that's, ooh, it's blood coming out of his eye. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. You should have seen her. She was freaking out. Her eye stuff. Eye stuff. I can deal uh, with a lot, but eye stuff, no. <laughs> um, he's just awesome and just really, and he isn't the head bad guy, which no. you don't find out till midway through the film. No. Um, but man, is he good, and boy, does he have great chemistry with, with Daniel Craig. Mm-hmm. Number two, Le Chief from Casino Royale. And I also have to admit, what I saw, I enjoyed the Orson Welles portrayal of the character, too, from the Casino Royale spoof film in the 1960s. Although I can't say I really cared for Peter Sellers. Uh, what was his name? Evelyn, Evelyn Tremble. <laughs> anyway, it's Evelyn. Orson Welles. You can't not like it. I can. That you movie can't, sucks. You can't, not, not the movie, the performance. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway. Number my, two. My number two. Um, one of the most terrifying characters ever. And I don't know what it is with this guy because he's so handsome. <laughs> he's so handsome. And every time I see him in interviews, he's so handsome and sweet and nice and seems like such a lovely person. And then he plays characters that I want to run out of the room <laughs> screaming. My number two is Raul Silva, who was born uh, Tiago Rodriguez, played by Javier Bardem in Skyfall. <laughs> um, Tiago Rodriguez was a member of MI6 and had been captured by the Chinese during a espionage mission gone wrong and was unfortunately sacrificed by his superiors, one of them being M. M. I think they I think they thought he was dead, to be honest they with did. you. Uh, it turned out that he wasn't. Although he tried, uh, he did the whole bite the. I didn't even know they still did the whole cyanide tooth thing. I don't know. Um, apparently, you can actually not die from that. Apparently, um, if you do it wrong. If you do it wrong, I didn't realize you could do it wrong. Apparently, you can, and it can really, 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 really f you up. 
Um, it's like eating peroxide for a week. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, he becomes Raul Silva and is on a mission of vengeance to discredit and destroy MI6 and specifically M throughout Skyfall, and he is completely bat guano insane. But in a good way. In a in a mesmerizing way. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a good way. I mean Entertaining way. Yes. I mean Javier, I think you're amazing. <laughs> call me. But She loves you in No Country for Old Men too, but you creep her out there too. Yeah. <laughs> Stop scaring me, Javier. I've had it. I've had it, man. Captain my nerves, Salazar is not gonna be much better either from the look of it. My nerves can't take it, man. <laughs> I mean the one the one scene the interrogation scene in Skyfall when he takes out the prosthetic showing the damage the cyanide did. I, I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, she Mom! Was, she, she, she was freaking out. I was completely like, oh, my God, make this scene stop. Oh, my God, I don't want to see this And anymore. yet you watch it intently every time it's on TV. Yeah, I'm like, please make We've me seen me. Skyfall like what, 15 times It's an least? awesome movie. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. so awesome. And that scene still makes me whimper like a five-year-old. Yeah, it does. You know, I sit there and so watch... Does the, so does the, uh, the torture scene from Casino Royale. I mean, I could watch an episode of Supernatural and not bat an eyelash. This stuff, I'm like, no, oh, God, can't. please make it stop. No, she can't. Like, <laughs> shut up. No, she can't. Um, my, number, my number two, Raul Silva, a.k.a. Tiago Rodriguez from Skyfall. I know who your number one's going to be, and I don't think I agree with it because he didn't make my list. Because it's like, oh, I, excuse me. I, don't know, I know. I just mm-hmm. I'll explain why later. My number one. There can be no other one, as far as I'm concerned. Of all the Bond films how I've ever seen, how do we go seen, from how do we go from James Bond to Highlander? <laughs> there can be only one. Uh, it's it's uh, no, that's that's that Con- Con- too. Huh? That yeah, I know. Con- she Con- said, just remembered that. <laughs> this is like God, really. Well, maybe we can bring Zardoz into the whole thing. No! <laughs> Holy sh- sugar, no. <laughs> Caught myself. I like John Borman movies. Yeah. Um, the the uh, th- 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 Really, this guy is just the ultimate bad guy for me, and I loved his portrayal of this character, and I love him as you do, and I am just crazy about it. My number one Bond baddie of all time, Raul Silva from Skyfall. Okay. I love the guy. He is... Insane and funny as hell and creepy as hell at the same time. And he manages to have that wonderful accent that he has. He has that. I can't decide because I I don't know if that's Javier's real accent or if he's putting a spin on it. I don't know either. Because I've heard him speak and I thought he spoke um, pretty normal standard English. Without the without the Hispanic glint, because you know, but here it was there was a slight Hispanic glint. There's a little bit of another European thing in there too, right? And it, it's very mesmerizing. It is. He's so good as bad guys too, and he's. I mean, the chemistry that happens in that scene in the warehouse where he caught Bond, and Bond is sitting there, and they start having all this this interesting interrogation which leads to this basically Silva coming on to him. Yeah, the whole thing about what... Oh, my God, I was on the floor. It was funny and terrifying at the the same time. The whole... He's basically (laughs) asking Bond something to the... It's basically the effect of, you know... Can I be your Bond woman? It's basically basically, what he was asking him. And and Bond, like, answers him back with basically saying, like, you know, what makes you think I haven't been with a man or something like (laughs) that. And... Oh, Mr. Bond. You know, and it's like, it's like, I don't know whether I'm turned on or creeped out by this. It is one of the reasons why I both. love Javier Bardem and everything I've ever seen him in. Yeah. He's awesome. And, and here, he is even, I didn't think it was possible to have an over the top villain as over the top as Goldfinger. Mm hmm. Because this guy, like this, like the other ones, he's not a world, world hunger, right? He has his own specific interest. He wants M dead. Yep. Discredited and dead. Mm-hmm. Doesn't care about whether he takes over the world or whatever. No, I don't agree with that. I think he's almost got like kind of a Heath Ledger's Joker kind of some men just want to watch the world burn thing happen. Okay, fair enough. I agree with that. That makes sense. I, I, everything about him is just really amazing. I know. And I hope he continues to do parts like this because I mean, even I like him in good guy roles too but little I've seen of yeah. him. But and this part, No Country for Old Men and soon to be Captain Salazar in the next Pirates movie. I, I'm I'm looking forward to that strictly because he's in it. 
because I didn't like the last two of them. Nice. My number one Bond villain of all time, Raul Silvia from Sky Silva. Oh, fuck, I'll do it again. My number one Bond villain of all time, Raul Silva from Skyfall. Okay. Skyfall. Would you knock it off? Um. Okay. My number one. I'm. I'm not surprised you didn't do this, but I'm. I'm sorry, I have to put him up here simply because he is the big bad. I mean, he but is. But he's so boring. I'm sorry, I've never liked any portrayal of his character by no matter what actor plays him. I just don't like the character. All right, my number one is Ernst Stavro Blofeld, who has been played on screen numerous times by numerous different actors. Um, Some of them really great actors. Yeah. Uh, he has appeared. Including John Hollis. Uh, yes. <laughs> although, although that character. People are going like, who? Okay. Um, not Star Wars fans aren't. Um. And Tomorrow People fans aren't. That's about it. Although that character was not mentioned by name as Blofeld. No, but it is considered that he is Blofeld. Mm-hmm. It is considered semi canon. Um, he. The character has appeared in From Russia with Love, Thunderball, You Only Live Twice, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Diamonds Are Forever, For Your Eyes Only, the John Hollis part. Um, and also, uh, Inspector. Um, and... <gasps> Spoiler alert! He does also appear in Never Say Never Again, which was a... An unofficial Bond film. Uh, yes, a, a non-Eaton Studios remake of Thunderball. Yeah. Uh, a non-canon is, film. Yeah. He has been played by, uh, several different actors, including Donald Pleasance, Telly Savalas, <laughs> uh, Charles Gray... Um, that man has no effing neck. <laughs> now the Rocky Horror fans just laughed. Um, Max von Sydow, and in the last Bond film, Christoph Waltz. I could. I, I'll be honest with you. Savalas was horrible as Blofeld, particularly. I loved Telly Savalas. He was good as you know, bad guys, good guys. I liked him, but I hated his Blofeld. Donald Pleasance, I love. Okay. Just for the record, just the thing that. about the thing about Blofeld. The reason he's so high on my list is because he is the head of Spectre. It's also the fact that while he wants to kill Bond, even more than killing Bond, he wants to hurt Bond. I mean, granted, he's not the one that kills Tracy in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. But he orders it done because she actually winds up being shot by one of his henchmen. Um, but that was an act done. That wasn't done for any reason other than to break a man's heart. And that is one of the most evil things you can do. You can. He's a foul, evil, undead sing. Not get an to undead you. sing. Knock it off. Now nobody's gonna get that joke. But. Um, <laughs> I mean, yes, killing people is wrong. Obviously, killing people is bad. Taking over, con- you know, taking over countries and acts of terrorism and all that <laughs> stuff like that. Yes, that's all horrible. That's bad. bad. Very bad. Don't you know, do that. Very, very bad. Blah blah. You're evil. We get it. But <laughs> when you when you take a man and you break his heart just for the sole purpose of the fact that you can, that's evil. That's, you know... Yeah, but that doesn't work. What? You can't do the whole... You, uh, you, you, it doesn't... <laughs> never mind, I blew my own joke. Anyway, go ahead. Joke. I mean, that's that's <laughs> beyond evil. That's diabolical. I mean, that's just really cruel. And I was really much more impressed with Christoph Waltz's turn as Blofeld than you were. Um... Simply because you were much more impressed with with Skype uh, that was Spectre than I was. I, I mean, enjoyed the whole it, but scene, I didn't like his the whole Skyfall. scene where he's having Bond tortured, and <sighs> with with the whole with the drill thing and all that stuff like that. I mean, that is just scientifically inaccurate. I too, really according to some fine. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. Sorry. No, I know, I know. <laughs> and dunking a girl in gold paint won't really kill you. Thank you, Adam and Jamie. But you know, um Yeah, uh, yeah, it will. It, it it could. They said it was plausible, not not dispounded cuz your pl- your pores clog up. You can't have trouble breathing, you overheat. Well, mm, yeah, but you you don't suffocate. It's not You don't su- you can suffocate, but not because of the gold paint because it's your body's being overwhelmed by 
whatever. Right, anyway. Enough Mythbusters stuff, anyway. Um, I just think that, you know, he is, he's the dark puppeteer. He's the man behind the curtain pulling all the strings and not caring who gets hurt as long as he gets his end goal. He's a narcissist. He's a monster. And that's why Ernst Stavro Blofeld is my number one James Bond bad guy. Yay! All right, so. My top five, Odd Job Goldfinger, number five. Number four, Oric Goldfinger himself, the best muhaha guy of the Bond group. Number three, Francisco Scaramanga. I like that name, Scaramanga. Uh, Man with the Golden Gun. Number two, La Chiffre from Casino Royale, 2006 version, although I like Orson Welles uh, from, 2000, from 1965. And Raul Silvia from Skyfall. Uh, Silva. From, I keep doing that. Raul Silva from Skyfall, okay. number one. My number five, uh, uh, top five list, number five, Nick Knack, the man from The Man with the Golden Gun. Um, number four, Francisco, Francisco Scaramanga from The Man with the Golden Gun. Number three, Le Chiffre from the 2006 version of Casino Royale. Number five, uh, number two, Raul Silva from Skyfall. And number one, Ernst Stavro Blofeld from numerous James Bond movies. We tied on three of those. Well, I had three people. They were yeah. in different positions, but yeah. Uh, that's pretty crazy. That was spectacular. And, and these are great. And, and I it came love. Out really well. I love. Like I said, I this, the Bond films have now introduced me to some really terrific people. Although I didn't care for the film, I do like Matteo Almarek now because of Quantum of Solace. Mm-hmm. I like him better now because of Grand Budapest Hotel. But um, I also uh, I found Mads Mikkelsen through Casino Royale, and I found Javier Bardem through uh, No Country for Old Men, and then later just got a real eye opener with Skyfall. So it's like, wow, these are great actors and doing great stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, crap. Why don't you tell everybody about everything else we do while I try to think of something for next week's show? Because oh, I right. totally forgot about doing All that. All right, okay. Well, while TC's I racking... I had something a couple of weeks ago, and I can't remember what it was. While TC's racking his brain, <laughs> this shouldn't take long. Um, <laughs> uh, Up yours. <laughs> I love you, baby. Uh, I will tell you about the other shows that we have here on the interwebs. And those would include <laughs> Subject Cinema, which is our movie podcast, where we do movie reviews and movie news and all kinds of fun things like that. This is a very special month because this is Masochistic March, which we do every year because we're idiots. And w- this month, this year, we're doing Masochistic Martial Arts Month. So we are watching terrible martial arts movies. So Oh, you know- boy, are we ever. So you don't have to. Actually, we hope you We will. hope you do because, as we always say, if, if we, we have, have to suffer, suffer you have, have to suffer. suffer. Um, and there's also the other shows that we do as well. We have, we each have our own separate shows besides Front Row 5 and 10. We've also got, I have my show, which is Platinum Roses Garden, which is a supernatural podcast where I do an episode review of that week's episode of Supernatural. And my show is called Catastrophe Vortex, and I'm doing disaster movies. And I have a lot of fun because I love that genre. And we also talk about TV shows about disasters, real-life disasters, music and disasters, and a lot more. And mm-hmm. that's at CatastropheVortex.com. And TC does two mini-shows every week. He has Tuesday Digidex and... What? Three-day weekend. Uh, uh, Three-minute weekend. Three-minute weekend. I'm sorry, three-minute weekend. Um, <laughs> Which Tuesday, is actually runs about eight minutes yeah. every week. It's, it's not very true. and uh, three-minute weekend are shows that help you choose what movies you'd like to come see, what's coming out that week on on uh, you know, Home video the on Tuesday and in yeah. theaters on Friday. Uh-huh. And you can find those also at... Uh, Three Minute Weekend uh, uh, and uh, Tuesday Digicks are a share a channel, mm-hmm. just like Front Row is on our, our Subject Cinema channel. And you can find them uh, by going to our website at eCinema1.com. Right. Uh, and there's also another member of our family, and that would be the Lion family who run the podcast Cave Babble. Uh, Eric and Valerie Lion and their kids and grandkids and other assorted folks. Um, they have a podcast where they talk about movies and games and music and television. Cave Babble eats odd things and whatever else they happen to decide to talk about. And we hope you'll check them out, too, over at CaveBabble.com. Come up with something Yay! Here. I did. Oh, goody. Thank you for that, by the way, because it <laughs> gave me an idea. Oh, boy. Let's go true pop culture with something we haven't done. We're going to take an in-depth look a little bit at the web. Okay. We talked about music. We talked about movies. We talked about television. This week, we're going to turn to the web. And next week on the show, our top 10 internet animal stars. 
Okay. They can be blogs. They can be YouTubes. They can be anything, but it has to focus on a specific animal. You have to have a specific name, like a, a, a particular cat, a particular dog, a particular weasel, whatever. All right. It can't be like something general like I can has cheeseburger. Okay. Okay. Uh, Internet animal stars on our next show. I bet you can guess half of the ones that are going to be on my list. Yeah, I can. I have to be honest. I I, I watch entirely too many cat videos for my own good. <laughs> I never thought that would ever happen. I used to think this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And then I discovered two or three of them, and I've been hooked ever since. And we keep finding more and more of them. So <laughs> it's like, ah. Uh, yep. Top ten Internet animal stars next time. On front row five and ten. Okay. And until then, what, did, what, what do you think? Is, are we done? I think we're done. Then why don't you close us out, dear? So this is Kim Brown. And I'm TC Kirkham. And we're hoping we can count on you to come back next week and help us count them up here on front row five and ten. Bye. Bye. been listening to Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and T.C. Kirkham. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24-7. PMR.